Yep, it's official, folks. Jim Jordan likes to argue, and there's no doubt about it. If he is willing to come on Meet the Press to discuss the politics of the day, there's no doubt about it. He's going to take a little bit of flack from these mainstream media idiot reporters, and that's, I said it, idiots. Um, they're discussing uh, the weaponization of the government. Um, Mr. Chuck Todd seems to be a lefty in every way possible, not just a news pundit, but he seems to be um, have the same mentality as a lot of these other folks. Nothing to see here. Uh, orange man bad and the whole nine yards. So let's go ahead and get into it. And I'll stop the video at a couple of points and make a few comments. But um, check out what uh, Mr. Jim Jordan not just says, but how Mr. Chuck Todd responds to it. I think this is a pretty crazy world we're living in just for the denial alone. We got a number of things we're going to look at in, in the Judiciary Committee and, and on the Select Committee as well. Explain the difference between the Select Committee, which you're chair of, that is focused on what is what you guys are calling the weaponization of the federal government and law enforcement uh, communities, and the Judiciary Committee. You're also chair of that. Yes. Yeah. the distinction here. And why are you chair of both? Well, that's what the leader wanted. That's what uh, Speaker McCarthy wanted. Um, and their, the Select Committee has some non Judiciary Committee members on it, members from the Intelligence Committee, the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, and Homeland Security are part of that committee. The weaponization is, is we have that because of what we've seen in, in various agencies over the last couple of years. I mean, I'll just take the FBI, for example. The FBI spied on the president's campaign, altered evidence in front of the FISA court, paid a confidential human source, even after they knew that confidential human source had lied to them. The, the FBI has targeted parents. The FBI has, has done a number of things. I mean, the FBI raided the home of a former president 91 days before an election, took the phone of a sitting member of Congress, and on and on we can go. And then just last week we learned that a former FBI agent, special agent mm -hmm. in charge of counterintelligence in the New York division, mm -hmm. was taking money from a Russian. And this wasn't just, I mean, this was the special agent in charge of counter, yeah. counterintelligence in New York taking money from Oleg Deripaska, not just any, yeah. not just you, any you know Russian, who, the Russian, yeah, you know and he was also... You know, who his, you know who his American advisor was, Oleg Deripaska, the former campaign manager to Donald Trump's campaign, I understand. Paul Manafort. I, I mean, understand. this is, so I, I you know, but does this not Oleg raise some troubling signs here? It sure does. That's Paul, Manaf look at. Paul Manafort was the go-between for Oleg Deripaska. He gave him polling information he also on the campaign. Paid, Oleg Deripaska also paid Christopher Steele, who was the key guy on the whole Steele dossier that launched the Trump-Russia investigation. Guess who one of the people was who was involved right. in launching that? Mr. McGonagall, this special agent at the FBI. So that's what we're looking at the this attack of uh, so you're gonna look at, are you going to look at Paul Man, are you going to look at the role Paul Manafort played with Oleg Deripaska to the extent that may come in but but we're okay. we're focused on the number of things we've seen here and I haven't even got to the Department of Homeland Security let me, let me trying unpack. to set up the disinformation un governance board well I want to unpack a little bit you 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 talk about the FBI abusing uh, powers when it comes to parents and the school board school board members were getting death threats these weren't idle things all right folks here's where it starts really getting good Things. These weren't par parents just yelling and screaming. These were you know actual death parents? threats to elected officials. And the FBI got a tip. How do they not, should they not look into a death threat when an elected official gets a death threat? School board writes a letter on uh, September 29th. Five days later, the Attorney General of the United States issues a memorandum to 101 U.S. attorneys' office around the country saying, set up this, this line that they can report on. 16 days later, Chuck, the mm -hmm. FBI sends out an email to Agents all across the country say, put this designation on parents, report it on the snitch line that the, the attorney general set up. So all that happens, think about it. September 29th, October 4th, October 20th of 20, that all happens in 22 days. When have you ever you, seen the federal you know government was, move that okay. fast? 25 because parents. What's there the were actual words? death threats. Understand. Understand. Literally, but understand. This is, Chuck, but let me just finish this. this 25 <laughs> parents get reported on that snitch line. They all get investigated. FBI shows up at their door. Guess how many have been charged? How many have been charged? Yeah. Zero. Then the FBI did Zero. its job. Did the FBI not do its job? You don't think, if, if okay, they were so trumping something what, up, wouldn't they be arresting somebody? One of the people I mean, charged. You're, you're, trying people a, you're trying to create a. Uh, you're trying no. to create a controversy out of the FBI following up a tip. I mean, literally. The, the, here's a mom. This is what Loudoun County, Virginia school board member. If she doesn't quit or resign before the end of the year, we will kill her. But first, we will kill you. These were among the comments in Dublin, no, no, Ohio, it, school board member. You have become it, our enemies. You will be removed one way or the other. Shouldn't the FBI it, investigate these? One things? of the one of the one of the people they went to. Here's my question. Why didn't this piece of crap, Todd, Chuck Todd, ask why wasn't the FBI investigating 
little boys in the little girls' bathroom because of the clothes they were wearing, and somehow or another, the school board was covering it up. This little girl was accosted, and um, everybody knows the story about what happened there. They didn't punish the kid for it, for uh, being in the little boys, uh, being in the wrong bathroom, nor accosting the little girl. Instead, they hid the story, they covered it up, and they moved the boy to another school where he done it again. And this guy here doesn't mention none of that crap in the story. He's more worried about, I guess, some kind of image. Uh, I don't know what's really going on in his head, but I would think that the safety of the children would be your first concern if you're reporting on stuff that really matters. And I think that these uh, kids' lives matter. The safety of these children matter more than this guy's left-wing lunatic uh, mentality. Now, let's go ahead and get back into it. It just pisses me off a little bit, folks. I can't help it. I got to say something. Investigate was a mom, and they said because she's in the group Moms for Liberty, and because they have firearms at her house, they go investigate her. You get investigated in America for that? They, they show up at your house? Now, you don't think that has a chilling impact on, on, on other parents? So there's a school board meeting tonight. Mr. Jones is thinking about going and talking at the school board meeting, and then he says, you know what, maybe I won't go, maybe I won't speak up, because I know Mrs. Smith had a visit from the FBI last week. The chilling impact on First Amendment free speech is, the, is what we care about. This committee is about protecting right. the Constitution, in particular, the First Amendment. You know, many of the things you want to investigate, when I look at them in isolation, I think they're fair targets. I think they're fair things for you to be questioning. The problem that, when you look at it, you want to talk about the weaponization of the Justice Department. You don't want to look at anything that happened during the Trump years. He subpoenaed data on Congressman Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell. That Here we go again. Old orange man, bad Trump hater, got to point the finger at Trump and try to say it wasn't fair uh, the way they're treating the current administration. Versus uh, the way Trump must have got away with everything and they never went after Trump for nothing. Listen to this garbage right here. This is a bunch of crap. This guy is as bad as they get. That's, that is known. He secretly obtained reporters' phone records using the Justice Department. He pressured the Justice Department, Donald Trump did, to go easy on Michael Flynn and Roger Stone. He pressured, he was, the Justice Department was pressured by Mark Shut Meadows up. to investigate this ele election fraud. He even tried to change the leadership Shut at the Justice Department. My point is, want to protect if, the you are, if you are concerned about the weaponization of the Justice Department in the Biden years, why not investigate the Trump years? We're going to look at threats to the First Amendment. We're going to look at the, the, this, this, what Elon Musk through, through the Twitter files has displayed is unbelievable. The idea that the, the FBI was paying Twitter $3.4 million to help them suppress no, information. That is not how it keep, works. Keep they, information they from the American Twitter to, to, to okay. comply with subpoenas. Do you That's think the federal law? Do you think it was okay? That's a law Congress passed. Do you think it's okay for the FBI to meeting, be meeting every week and suppressing information about uh, a conservative and suppressing the Hunter Biden story, which we know is true? Do you think that's all right? I think most Americans say, no, that's probably information. We I understand, but Here's this, what a, I would this like. is a private organization Here's, that made this decision. With pressure from the government. That's the point. I, I, I can understand a private organization right. can do it. I don't think it's right, but you, there shouldn't be pressure from the government. Here's When is the FBI just going to stay out of the election process? Just let leave the people decide. Let the American people decide. In 2016, they spied on Trump's campaign. 2018, it was the Mueller investigation. 2020, they, they helped suppress the Hunter Biden story. 2022, they raided the home of a former president 91 days before an election. Maybe just let Wait the American minute. people decide. Are you enough, folks. I just want to let y'all know Jim Jordan is absolutely right. Why don't the government stay out of our business and let the people decide who we want to elect? Tell me what you think about this video, folks. And before I forget, I want to give a shout out to two people. One myself on the other channel, DIY Scrapper channel. I've got a couple, two or three videos over there since a lot of you have been over there last. Go check it out. Go check out my junkin' videos. I'm trying to build that channel up. DIY Scrapper. And um, also, William Archibald back on his channel. He's back on his Will Fix It and William Archibald back on his YouTube. He is uh, out of commie tube jail at the moment. So go check him out. If you don't know, go give him a shout out. Like, subscribe, and share to go to Patriots. Hope you enjoyed.